fighters, fireballs coming right at me. Watch the laser towers. Aim for the tops. They're going to cut out. Use the force. They're coming too fast. It's way, it's way. My shields are gone. All right, stop going in. Welcome to Half Glass Gaming, the uh, only uh, multiplayer, only online podcast you'll find. That's a fact. I'm not clear it is. Every other podcast primarily has some sort of uh, single player offline component. We don't. (laughs) And we are not apologetic about whatever content we removed. You're paying full price. We're getting rich and we're loving it. As always, I'm joined by the Reverend. I am the Reverend. I got Mandy. Hi. That's Josh. Uh, yeah. Yep. He's just Josh. Mm -hmm. I will not introduce myself this time around because you should already know who I am. And if you don't, shame on you. How's everybody doing? I'm upright. I have beer. I have I have uh, chocolate bars. I'm I'm in a good place. Yeah, Josh is in some sort of a peculiar uh, crouch position. He he looks like he's (laughs) about to like spring on some criminals or something. I'm all fired up. I was notified by my property management company that (laughs) we got new laundry machines. And they're very state of the art. Uh, You can use a credit card. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use change. Yeah. There's an online app which allows you to check the status of all of the machines. (laughs) And so I don't even I don't even have to like go to the laundry room, which for the record, is right across the hall from my yeah. <laughs> my apartment. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you just don't feel like putting on pants. And I can just talk on Well, sometimes you don't have pants because you're washing you're them. Right. Out. And like me, I would just walk out into the hallway without pants, but I'm told I'm not supposed to do that. Mm. So the app would be useful. Mm. The flip side of that is that it used to be free to dry. Like all of the dryers oh, were yeah. free. Oh, wow. And that's it was $2 a, to wash. That's an amenity. Now I have to pay to wash and dry. Yeah, which means I'm paying twice as much for laundry. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, within a week of getting these new machines, two of the washers broke down. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, you know, you install new new equipment. You have to work the kinks out. And when you have new features on a piece of equipment, you have to pay for those features. Mm-hmm. And I can't get the app to work yet. <laughs> well, now we've got a problem because they've got some features and you can't access all the features and you're still paying for them. Got to yeah. uh, wait for that big patch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Make the game playable. Yeah, they didn't really release a day one patch. They, yeah, they right. They The launch was not well done. And the weird thing is they charged me less for rent this month. <laughs> Maybe it's an apology. They were having server issues. Right. Right. The online component isn't working. (laughs) So they figure, you know, maybe we'll just slash the DLC price in half and uh, give you a break on your rent. Because the rent is DLC. Mm -hmm. (laughs) To be be fair, the the amount that the rent went down is less than the amount extra I'm going to end up paying for laundry this month. Like what? Five bucks? Yeah, it was like five bucks. Oh, wow. I'm just entertained that we're sitting here talking about uh, Josh's laundry issues like it was online gaming. Mm-hmm. That that entertains me. Mm-hmm. There seems to uh, have been a kerfuffle in online gaming lately as well. Why don't you put a, a, a muzzle on that kerfuffle and muffle it for a second. We're going to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Before we really kind of get into the uh, larger topic at hand, uh, it's going to be heated. I'll tell you that. Let me just say, I hope you are in a diaper. <laughs> First, though, let me let me take the time to thank uh, Wheelie and 2XAA for the music. Um, of course, you know, you can find us at um, uh, RetroVault.com, which if you're listening to us there now, feel free to leave a comment and, uh, you know, say hey, and uh, maybe I'll say hey back. Of course, we're on HalfGlassGaming.com. Uh, We're also on uh, iTunes and uh, Stitcher Radio. Um, I'd also like to point out that uh, Josh is wearing a really nice pair of socks. He is. They're they're nice socks. Oh, man. (laughs) Yeah, my socks are, you know, full of fucking holes and everything. They are. But our arguments aren't. They're sound. So when we come back, we're going to talk about multiplayer games. Boom.
So we're uh, we're back from the break. There's some rumors going around a lot of subreddit threads that I've been seeing. Uh, Josh, you got some opinions about uh, Battlefront? Funny enough, I've actually been in the, the Battlefront subreddit quite a bit. Uh-huh. And been contributing and wow. talking with people. No, wasn't there a uh, thing with like Star Wars Battlefront and a couple of other games doing multiplayer only? Yeah, I think the the, the one that got the most attention was was uh, Star Wars Battlefront, mm-hmm. which I freaking love. I easily have put 100 hours into that game already. Mm-hmm. I had played the shit out of the first two when, when those came out. It's been, you know, about a decade since mm-hmm. they released a new one. People are complaining about Battlefront, and I think there's a lot of misinformation that's going on around that may may not be especially accurate and Mm -hmm. i think a lot of the complaints people are making about star wars battlefront aren't really super valid or fair complaints well i feel like that's common more recently especially because you know with the online community being what it is in like gaming community not any specific games Mm -hmm. community but Mm -hmm. um you know information travels in a different way than it did during the retro era Mm -hmm. uh and so like a lot of people before they even play the game they get their opinion from some youtuber or some uh you know video game journalism outlet where they have the one negative review but it came out first First, and so everyone presumes that that's what's going on, and like they presume that that's that's what the game is. I, I, I'll say if, if you're looking for a good aggregate on reviews, check out uh, OpenCritic.com. Yeah, I'm a, th- those guys are great too. Uh, they're pretty active on NeoGAF, yeah. the gaming forums, mm-hmm. and they're adding in a feature to follow specific reviewers Mm -hmm. so you can find a reviewer who you frequently agree with or disagree with and follow them and see how they rate games instead of an outlet which i think is a lot more useful yeah i think it's a great tool just to kind of get an idea of you know generally the consensus of a game and uh yeah and with so many freelancers in the gaming journalism sphere it's like you know ign may pull in a freelancer in november because they're so busy Mm -hmm. and that freelancer might you know the next month review something for Kotaku or the mm-hmm. next month review something for GameSpot or the next month, you know, yeah. review something for someone else. And mm-hmm. so it's like this person wrote one review for IGN and that is IGN's score for this game. But like that may have been the only piece this person has ever written for mm-hmm. IGN. And so if you agree or disagree with that person, it does help if you can follow their career. And yeah, the team behind Open Critic, they just they love video games and they're just working. And it's already a really useful tool, but it's new. It's yeah, fairly new it's still. And new. they're working so hard to make it the most useful possible tool. And I just am really appreciative of what they're doing. And I'm really excited to mm-hmm. see what that site becomes in even a couple months from now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and like Metacritic critic just fucking they're like uh we're popular you know let's call it a day and yeah. didn't <laughs> yeah the, just fucking left this gigantic mess of a mm-hmm. site and they don't fucking care mm-hmm. i know like metacritic charges sites to be on it and all this bullshit and and you know they weighed certain sites differently but that's a that's a metric that they keep hidden from the public and so you don't really you don't even know how these scores are being aggregated. Mm-hmm. Right. And the whole point is to like streamline the reading or review process and it's just making it more confusing. Mm-hmm. And especially when you consider that um, there's a major segment of video game reviews that come from YouTube. Hell, there have been people who have tied the popularity of Flappy Bird to PewDiePie who is one of the most popular video game YouTubers out there right now. The most, the most popular. Indisputably the most yeah, popular. Yeah, there's like right. nobody really. That- so I think we're wandering a bit from the original topic a little bit. But the thing that people are complaining about right now with Star Wars Battlefront is that they supposedly reduced the amount of single-player content in the game in order to provide a more robust multiplayer experience. And on top of that, the amount of content that is in the multiplayer experience isn't enough to justify the removal or reduction of that single-player experience. You know, a couple years back, you know, the big 
stink was that they're releasing all these single player games and they're tacking on these multiplayer elements that aren't well made they feel last minute and probably very likely took away from some of the assets that you could have used for the single player game and that was a full price game with this additional content added to it so it seems kind of ridiculous now that there are games coming out where i guess it's the adverse you know it's like well now content's taken out of it but would you really want some tacked on single player mode if it's completely worthless I mean, I think Call of Duty typically has been known to have a relatively engaging and fun single player element. You look at Call of Duty and Call of Duty oftentimes, especially the Black Ops series, Mm -hmm. feels like you're getting three games for the price of one. The Black Ops. Right. Because you've got you've got your multiplayer content, you've got an entire single player campaign, and then you've got a zombies mode, which is, you know, like a four player co-op mode Mm -hmm. where you shoot zombies. Mm -hmm. You know, even in Black Ops 3, they feel like completely different games from each other. And so it's a super good value. The thing is, Activision's going to sell 20 million copies of that game. People are judging every game now off of those standards. It's like, oh, if Activision is doing it, why can't you? And it's like, well... You know, Activision is one of the biggest publishers in the world. Right. Like, they can the, afford the, it. The reason that this other game company can't do it is because they don't have billions of dollars. Mm-hmm. So to expect a studio like Insomniac, who made the Resistance series, to put out a game on par with Call of Duty for the amount of content across both multiplayer and single player modes, it's just kind of absurd because they don't have Call of Duty money. And I know EA, who's publishing Star Wars Battlefront, has an absurd amount of money, and their studio DICE is developing it, so they can put as much money as they want in into the game, but Battlefront doesn't have the legacy that Call of Duty does. Call of Duty is guaranteed to rake in millions and millions and millions of dollars every single year, which makes it less of a risk. You know, if they put $100 million into Call of Duty, they're going to get it all back every single year. Um, Battlefront's not proven to do that yet. So it might not be financially smart to put that kind of money into the first uh, Battlefront game that's come out in 10 years. I think it's a much smarter strategy when you're developing a multiplayer game is to start small and trickle out content over Mm -hmm. time. You know, create a small batch of very good content and then trickle out more for free over time. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they're going to be doing. Yeah. Well, But I think also if you look at the type of game, I don't think there's very many people out there who are going to go out and buy Call of Duty specifically for the single player component and never touch the multiplayer. It's kind of like what are you what are you arguing for? You know, it's there if you want to impl- enjoy it or you know you got some time. You're not going online. You could maybe have a little like, story experience. But if it's not there, is it really missing? In a lot of cases, I feel like the single player is there almost as a practice mm-hmm. section. Like this is most obvious right. in fighting games. Mm-hmm. You know, your Street Fighter twos, whatever. Uh, they have a single player mode. They have an arcade mode, whatever. But that's just to give you practice so that you can do better in the uh, times when you play against someone. I mean, really, it's just making you think you're better at the game than you actually yeah, right. are. And yeah. you. Yeah, I right. mean, they've actually done so studies on the Dunning-Kruger effect in games with single player and multiplayer Mm -hmm. and people think they know how to play the game but what it really does is teach people bad habits. There are even things where people who jump straight into the multiplayer versus starting with the single player actually play better Mm -hmm. than people because it it doesn't teach you how to actually play the game. It, Mm -hmm. It makes you think you know how to play the game when you don't. So I don't know. I got a question. I mean has there been a game where it's a single player focused game that had multiplayer element to it where the multiplayer completely won over and became the more popular aspect of that game uh uncharted really uncharted the original uncharted had no multiplayer mm-hmm. the multiplayer mode for uncharted 2 ended up being really popular mm-hmm. And when uh, Uncharted 3 came out, they were really pushing the the online stuff huge. They yeah. did a whole promotion with Subway where 
if you bought a sub, you would get a code and you could play the beta. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Uncharted 3 had a phenomenal multiplayer. Mm -hmm. And Uncharted 4 has done a multiplayer beta as well. Yeah, you have to buy the collection. Yeah, you buy the Uncharted collection. And they had like a week, a week or a week and a half long beta where you could play uh, Uncharted 4 yeah. multiplayer. And yeah. I played it and it is so smooth. Uh, it feels more like over the top and kind of ridiculous than the old games did. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so smooth. Mm -hmm. I, speaking of Naughty Dog, The Last of Us has a multiplayer component. And I really like The Last of Us as a single-player game, but I never interacted with the multiplayer side. Mm -hmm. And I know Josh has, so, you know, what What did you think yeah, of The, the Last of Us multiplayer? The well, Last of Us multiplayer actually still has a, a pretty strong community. And it's because they took a lot of the stuff that was great about The Last of Us and put it into their multiplayer. So you can craft? Yeah, there's crafting in the oh, multiplayer. Wow. And so, like, it's also, like, kind of survival-based because you start off with not very much ammo and you've mm -hmm. got to scavenge for it. You know, you can craft your, like, nail bombs and things like that. Really? But you've got to, like, find caches of materials. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're, like, sneaking around and trying to find these materials and then craft your better weapons mm -hmm. while the other team is also doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's really super fun. And th that's why Uncharted worked as, as well, because part of Uncharted's charm and why people liked it so much was, you know, there's all the climbing stuff, there was all the stealth stuff, uh, and they brought that into the multiplayer mm -hmm. where, you know, you're climbing a wall and you see a guy up on top of the wall and you grab his leg and pull him off or... You know, you sneak up behind someone, you can snap their neck and get a right. one-hit kill and stuff like that. And they brought in that into their multiplayer. They mm -hmm. said, they said, what is it about our single player gameplay wise that really works? And how can we implement that into multiplayer? Yeah. And Naughty Dog has been really successful at doing that. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of games don't do that exact thing. Like they, when they add in a multiplayer, it's very clear that they just went with, well, what's another popular multiplayer game? How can we make our single player game feel like that multiplayer game? Well, that's why, like, you look at like the Resistance games, which is, you know, another franchise that was big on the PS3. And they really didn't look at like, oh, what makes Resistance fun? Like, let's put that into our multiplayer uh, game match until the third one. Like, I felt like the third one did, did the best job of it. But Resistance was always, and Insomniac in general, the mm -hmm. studio that makes it, has always been about crazy weapons. Yeah. And the Ratchet and Clank series was about crazy weapons. The Resistance series was about crazy weapons. Even Fuse that, that didn't do very well was about yeah. crazy weapons. Mm -hmm. And they finally kind of figured that out with Resistance 3 is that, well, if we make our multiplayer about how do you use these crazy weapons against the other team, then it, it started to work. I think the reason that Resistance never really worked is because because they had to kind of nerf the stuff to make it like, oh, we need to balance it. And so I think the craziness of the guns was mitigated by the fact that they weren't very powerful. And so it just wasn't as fun. Like the Elder Scrolls Online, by trying to focus on how can we make it so that all these people can delve these dungeons, it takes away a lot of the personal design mm -hmm. like you know if you want to play a stealth character you know okay so i want to stealth through this dungeon oh this is a huge multiplayer place so five other characters have already gone through and just hit everything with an axe and now there's no purpose for me to try to stealth this dungeon mm. or whatever mm -hmm. so eso kind of misses out on the you know i get to approach each thing as I want to approach it mm -hmm. by trying to make it multiplayer. Mm -hmm. I haven't played ESO, but I've played Skyrim and I've played Oblivion. And, and one of the things that makes those games interesting and fun is this feeling, this almost feeling of loneliness of yes. like, right. you know, wandering around and being the only one powerful enough to fight that dragon right. and then seeing it attack a town that you want to visit and being like, okay, oh shit, that's me. Yeah. Knowing like, that probably right. nobody else has been in these ruins since they became ruins. Right. 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 Or, you know, this dragon just dropped in the middle of this hold city and, you know, the guards are going to hit it, but it's a dragon. It's going to kill all of them. Mm -hmm. 
I think one game that's been successful in sort of uh, bridging the gap between sort of a single player experience and becoming a multiplayer online game is Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto Online is a ton of fun. It's absolutely insane. I mean, you know, I think they were smart in limiting sort of the number of players per map or server um, so that there's enough mayhem that can occur. But if you just sort of want to be on your own, doing your own thing or whatever, you can do that as well. You yeah. Know? I don't like grouping up. I don't like doing multiplayer things. It's just, I personally dislike it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I felt like I did, like I could, but I didn't have to, to enjoy stuff that GTA Online offered. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you're going to do a multiplayer game that appeals to people who want a single player, that's how you do it. It. Don't try to have a really bare bones and obnoxious single player campaign. Let it be multiplayer because that's what you're designing, mm-hmm. but do it in a way where a single player can solo stuff. And that will be just as appealing. Like there are a lot of MMOs that I play, like Star Trek Online, as an example. Other than the some of the end game uh group up thing missions. I can solo STO so I can play it by myself without worrying about other people, Mm -hmm. and I enjoy it. GTA Online does tend to fall apart when you're just in a random mission with random guys who don't give a fuck what the objective is. This guy just wants to ass around over here and... You right. know, everybody runs into their car and just drives off and tries to get to the thing as fast as they can and start the firefight. And they get killed before you even get there and all of the lives are gone. And it's like, well, what the fuck? I ended up getting a free copy of Aliens Colonial Marines. Yeah. And then yeah, I'm m- glad you didn't pay for it. Uh, then Mandy. <laughs> I think that's a great game. Mandy got a copy for like about $5. Yeah. And so we, we played it together and... For a game that combined we put $5 into, we actually had a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. Well, Aliens is my favorite movie of all time, mm. so I'm pretty Aliens or Alien? Aliens, not Alien. Really? Alien. Okay. Yes. Uh, Aliens is a very good no, not, action sci-fi. Yeah, no, I think most people pretentiously claim Aliens, so I, I was just making sure. No, I, I'm saying... It, I, I mean, know you love The Crow. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I mean, Aliens is really... it's. They nail so many things that so many action movies do do poorly. And I Mm. actually really like James Cameron as a director, which Mm. is also an unpopular opinion. Yeah. Visually, he does action scenes really well. Mm -hmm. And he's pretty good at world building. And those are Mm -hmm. skills that a lot of directors don't have. But anyways, so it was more fun for me by default because here's a game based around a movie I really like. And I mean, it's not a very good game, but it's not as bad Mm -hmm. as it's made out to be. Mm -hmm. Well, and also you only paid $5 for it. And I feel like the amount you pay for any game has, has an effect. Mm-hmm. The online matchmaking in Aliens Colonial Marines was really shitty because if Mandy and I wanted to play together from two separate consoles, we had to keep the channel open that allowed for, you know, two more people to randomly drop in and out mm. if they wanted to. And so we would be playing together and all of a sudden <laughs> we would have more people in the party. And some of them were cool and some of them were terrible. There was one guy who just shot me over, <laughs> I think because I was female yeah. and he was an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. And so he just shot me every single time I talked. But the worst guy, actually worse than that guy, was this guy who would just bark out orders to everybody constantly. And he, like, saw himself as this master strategist. But the thing is, he didn't even know what he was doing. So he'd just bark out really bad orders all the time. And, like, he was so intense. And, like, he didn't even know what he was doing. And, like, the only way to get past stuff was to ignore him. And then he'd get really mad if people weren't listening to him. Mm -hmm. Did he sound like Bill Paxton? (laughs) <laughs> not not because no, he sounds sadly. like no if only <laughs> if only he sounded Hudson, like, Hudson is my favorite I'm surprised so. that there were more than just you two who actually wanted to play that game oh uh, yeah, no right. we had no problem finding people to play that's it. encouraging yeah the guy but would be like oh go stand next to that gloomy glowy thing that's, gloomy. <laughs> that's, that's spouting spouting you know acid ooze and you'd, like you'd go stand over there and the ooze would kill you and you'd be like what the fuck dude but uh, a lot of people sent me friend requests who we played with and there's mm-hmm. this one guy who will still message me and Josh all the time 
time who we played Colonial Marines with and like I started playing Diablo 3 and he sends me a message like what yeah. you know about Reaper of Souls and like every time I start up I just think what you know about Reaper of Souls and it was like <laughs> what like WAT yeah. <laughs> so I like read it in my head in a very specific way and he'll send he was sending Josh messages about like Battlefront and Black Ops 3 and yeah. he'll just always check in on yeah. the games we're playing what a goofy guy yeah. I feel like that that's true of a lot of games that are otherwise not very good having another person or two to play with can make it more fun Mm -hmm. the game itself is not the only thing now now it's how you're interacting with the people you're playing with now it's the social aspect and you know you can enjoy a shitty game no matter what the game is you know tabletop role-playing card games video games whatever Mm -hmm. if you have the right group who can enjoy it in the same way you enjoy it oh yeah well mandy and i you know originally started dating online And she was in Massachusetts and I was here in Minneapolis. One of the things we did to hang out was we would play online co-op games. And I've never been that big into online co-op, but we ended up having a ton of fun with with a lot of games that um, I wasn't really able to enjoy before. Like, you know, the Scott Pilgrim game, Mm -hmm. Colonial Marines, Mm -hmm. like Diablo 3 was so much fun and stuff like that. So... Online co-op and online multiplayer can definitely, you know, be a thing that brings people together. And oh, yeah. super cool. How many of us have actually made friends with people via online gaming? Uh, I have made a number of friends via online gaming. Though, to be fair, a lot of the friends I've made have been, like, role-playing friends instead of just multiplayer game friends. Because I don't... I don't multiplayer a lot. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I don't like to play with people if I don't know them. Yeah. I just ignore everybody. I, I used to work with this girl who played WoW all the, time, all the time. And, you know, she would make friends and they would, like, come hang out with her. And, like, she had one dude from Canada that would, like, come down for a week and, and stay with her and her husband. And, like, they were super good friends. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was kind of a cool thing that you can make friends in, in a new way and share, like, an interest like that. Yeah, I accepted a number of friend requests from GTA Online, but, I mean, most of those are just, like, idiot 13-year-old boys. Yeah, right. That uh, once you find out who they are and you're chatting with them, you're like, all right, bro, I'm going to get out of here. But uh, I know I, I don't play a lot of multiplayer games online, especially competitive ones. And I don't know, if Mandy, if you can agree with me on this, but I just get, like, a huge amount of anxiety. Yeah, no, I do, too. I get like, so stressed. Yeah, it's like I'm not good enough. Or, yeah. No, I have know. guilt issues to begin with, and it's just... <laughs> Just like all it does is exacerbate all of those existing issues so i'm just miserable even josh is really nice to me yeah. <laughs> despite what you guys might think from him picky at me but like i used to get really upset even when josh and i would play games together but he's nice enough that i got over that but mm-hmm. mostly like playing games with other people is torture for me oh, i that's... like playing with josh and that's about it but i love mmos i just don't like mm-hmm. playing with actual people well and that's why i don't group up much either for the exact same reason i you you wouldn't be able to tell it by the fact that i uh just ramble on on these podcasts but that's all alcohol i like i have severe depression anxiety problems i've mentioned and same thing you know i try to group up and i'm like i'm gonna fuck everything up and then these other people's gameplay experiences are ruined because of how i fucked up Mm -hmm. and then i get i don't do it i got into a match with this guy in gears of war 3 who is like i'm one of the 100 top ranked players in this game you guys are fucking it up for me and it's like dude <laughs> it's like dude i bought this game two days ago like seriously like yeah. it, it's cool that you're mr wonderful but like is he in the top 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent but it, he's like oh, it's, i'm watching my ranking go down you guys are fucking it up it was like yeah. dude was the most miserable player i've and it, it's like it's like come on dude like you're not being a team player either yeah. like don't just blame us yeah it's like, go join your fucking Mensa server <laughs> and get the hell out of here. I, I've heard League of Legends works really hard to mitigate that kind of thing. I don't like MOBAs, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I actually sat in on this conference. It was, yeah, his name's, uh, his name's Mike Ambender. 
he's Valve's experimental psychologist. And he was talking to a bunch of college students and I got to sit in on it. And one of the things he talked about was how he um, used psychology to like make the Dota fan base mm-hmm. behave better. Mm-hmm. And one of one of the things that he did to get players to behave better is he created a survey. And at the end of every match, you rank your teammates. It's like, were, were your teammates good team players and things like that? And so he added a question to the survey that was like, was I a good team player? And you had to rank your own performance. And he said the amount of, uh, I don't remember the percentage, but the amount of reports people had for like reporting each other for bad behavior went way down. Yeah. Huh. Because people don't want to rank themselves as a bad team player. And if they're, if they're rating themselves as a good team player, psychologically, there's, you know, there's a cognitive dissonance there if they're not behaving the way they're claiming they're behaving. Mm-hmm. And so they're, they're, behavior automatically starts aligning with what they're saying their behavior is. It's a crazy, that is cool, that's, cool that's thing. That's really neat. I like that. Yeah, GTA Online implemented like a bad sport element to it. If you quit out of a mission before it was finished, it got kind of ridiculous. Like if you continuously started shit with other players, which kind of seems like almost the point at times of the game, it could lower your ranking. Or I don't know if it'd be ranking necessarily, but like the way that society sees you you, I guess you could say. Um, and then ultimately, if you're just a complete dick, you just be in a server with other complete dicks and have at it. I'm actually okay with that. Mm-hmm. Um, in well, I think, I think, right. I think what ends up happening with stuff like that, though, is that the people who are going to be dicks are going to be reporting everyone else. Right. But then again, going back to this Mike Ambender talk that I attended, he also talked about that. And he also talked about how they have analytics data that shows like, oh, this guy's just reporting fucking everyone and the players he's reporting don't have a negative, you know, they don't have a lot of reports mm-hmm. and and this guy does. Mm-hmm. So like clearly he's the problem and they can dismiss bullshit claims. But I think the temptation really is for the guy who's going to be a huge asshole is to to just start, you know, yeah. harassing and, people by like trying to lower their social right. ranking. And so the thing is, I feel like if the companies are willing to put the work in, they can actually make like account for that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it is difficult. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and the thing that immediately comes to mind is Sony Entertainment Online, which decided that if they discovered that players were harassing people outside of their servers, like on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, they would institute a ban. Mm. And there was a lot of hatred towards that because, you know, well, why should what I do off of the servers have an effect on, you know, the my server stuff? And I'm sitting here going, maybe you shouldn't be assholes. And if you're going to create an online community, that's part of it. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if you're sitting there harassing another player, even if it's not on the server, you're still harassing another player. And that's something the game has to take into effect because it's trying to build an online community. And that community is a really important part of continuing the multiplayer aspect. Mm-hmm. Going back to Valve, Gabe Newell actually has talked about, um, since so many of their games have thriving online communities there are players who bring value to those communities and there are players who bring down the value of those communities and he is constantly uh, or at least at one point he was trying to figure out how to uh, keep the players with value and like discourage the players with less value from playing the games and (laughs) he kind of made this offhand comment that I think a lot of people got pissy over, but he was talking about how he's like, yeah, the people that are like really good in the community, like they should just play our games for free and we should like charge the people who are being assholes. Like we should charge them more for the game than the base price of the game. Yeah. And, like, because the players who are bringing value to the community are bringing value to that game mm-hmm. and are making it other players want to play it. And mm-hmm. the people who are being assholes are 
you know, diminishing the value of that game. Yeah, I think the going back to GTA Online, you know, the number of times when some guy was a dick and put C4 on my car while I was in the store <laughs> and blew me up when I came out or drove a car in front of the door and blocked it so that I couldn't leave the store. All that shit, obviously, I remember it. But what sticks out to me the most is like the one guy who was like, hey, anybody new on here? I got a cool thing I could show you or... You know, oh, you're looking for extra money. Let me show you a couple of missions that maybe help you out. Or, you know, you run into a guy who's just a cool dude or woman, you know, a nice lady. And uh, that just are there to sort of help uh, add value to your gaming experience as opposed to just be a complete turd and shit on everything, you know. Or like I mentioned. The turd that shits. The turd yeah, right. that shits on everything. Uh, extra, extra turd. <laughs> extra um, excrement. No, I've, I've mentioned uh, Kingdom of Loathing. Has, like, it's, it's a browser game, but it also has a chat that you can take part in. And it has multiple chat channels. And a lot of the time, people will get into the chat channels and they'll just randomly come up with reasons to give other players currency or items. Mm -hmm. Even I did it at one time when I had like a whole bunch of currency. I'd be like, okay, well, let's just come up with some random trivia questions. And if you answer the first person to answer this trivia question in this way, we'll get some currency. And, you know, so they answered it and I gave out currency and other players will do that too. Mm -hmm. And it like it doesn't have a huge effect on the game itself other than you have a little more currency but it really helps to build community because you know now you're like oh well there's people who just have fun and are willing to be kind mm -hmm. uh, in a way that they don't have to be kind in this community and so now I'm more interested in being part of the community and so it continues to build the community where people are just nice to each other and help each other become better in the game yeah no watching josh play online games i'm convinced that the people with the worst names tend to be the best players like when you see the top ranked players at the end of a call of duty match or even a battlefront match they just tend to have these ridiculous names yeah mandy pointed this out when i was playing black ops 3 mm -hmm. it was like like the highest player is always the one with the worst name. <laughs> <laughs> Examples, please. Oh, I don't. I don't remember. I remember the ones we made up when we were trying to think of winning names. <laughs> yeah, we tried to actual player names, and I don't want to say actual player names either because I don't want anybody to get harassed. But like, yeah, we were like trying to think of a a good name. Like, if I re if I rename myself, I'll do better at this game. <laughs> Oh, we came up with Big Balls McNutter Squash <laughs> would be the ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate video game handle. Like, there's just no beauty game. You can't come up with a more obnoxious name than Big Balls McNutter Squash. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> when I was playing the original Call of Duty a lot, I would always try to create these, like, Lovecraftian names. And I remember my first Call of Duty name was uh, Deadly Tentacles. <laughs> and I remember later I, I changed it to uh, ungodly mandibles. <laughs> Since we're talking about um, you know multiplayer games, uh, one that's really hot right now is uh, Rocket League. No, I'm sort of fascinated by Rocket League. Uh, Rocket League is actually a remake of a 2008 PSN game called Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars. <laughs> what? <laughs> That just rolls off the tongue. Oh, absolutely. It sounds like Mary Poppins ought to be singing about it. <laughs> Pretty much. No, the devs actually said like that he thinks of it as the rough draft version of Rocket League. And mm -hmm. I actually really like that. I think it's super cool that indie devs can, you know, make a game that isn't quite what they wanted to make and then, you know, get funding and make exactly the game they wanted to make later on. I don't think good ideas should be scrapped just because you've used them once. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, it's a shame, though, that they removed so much content from the title. I know, I know. If you're if you're taking words out of a title, you really need to be putting other words back in <laughs> yeah. if you want to <laughs> provide the same value. Yeah, because on face value, Rocket League tells me absolutely nothing about what I'm getting into. <laughs> Supersonic car flipping acrobatic... <laughs> Monkey swing I mean it's just... allidocious. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, since we're talking about removing content, I I, I do have some more to say about Battlefront. Of course Aww. you do. Sure you do, yeah. Can't we just remove that content? <laughs> uh, no, edit point. <laughs> But uh, going back to Battlefront, the complaints that people are making about the game aren't super valid. And mm -hmm. 
they say that, well, it's lacking content for a multi if multiplayer game that removes a single player experience. Mm-hmm. They should have more content. But I think that misses the point mm-hmm. of what an online multiplayer needs to do and needs to do well. Mm-hmm. And more content isn't necessarily a good thing in, mm-hmm. a, in an online multiplayer game. Yeah. Um, more content in general isn't necessarily a good thing. I mean, I've put extensive amounts of time into all three Battlefront games, and, or all three mainline Battlefront games. And the thing is, in the old Battlefront games, the community would build around particular maps. In the first game, it was Hoth. Mm-hmm. I there were servers that would play Hoth exclusively 24-7. And those are the servers I would gravitate toward. Mm -hmm. You know, once I played the rest of the content the game had to offer, I gravitated toward Hoth and just stayed there. Everybody loves Hoth. Right. I played Hoth over and over and over and over again. I felt like I got my money's worth. Mm -hmm. It's like all of that other content didn't fucking matter because Mm -hmm. I played it once and was like, okay, I'm done with that now. Uh, but the main draw of the game was that Hoth was a really cool map. Mm-hmm. Battlefront 2 had a campaign that was pretty highly regarded. The thing is, Battlefront 2's campaign and Battlefront 1's campaign was the multiplayer mode. Instead of human players, you're just playing against bots. And they would put cutscenes in between. And yeah, it was, a, it was telling a cool story. It was telling the story of a squad of clone troopers starting in the Clone Wars era and then finding themselves against the rebellion. You know, they were at one point on the good side and now they're on the bad side. And, mm-hmm. and, and so it was, it was pretty interesting. However, gameplay wise, it was one player against bots instead of other human players. And the bots were dumb as fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a galactic conquest mode, which was the same exact thing. It was, you would play a multiplayer map, but it would have bots, and then you would uh, take over the galaxy one planet at a time. Mm-hmm. It was a cool thing, but it wasn't that much extra content. Even the new the new Battlefront has single player content. It has single player maps. It has you know single player like survival mode and all this stuff. It just doesn't tell a coherent story. Mm-hmm. It still has the cutscenes. It still has you know voice acting. It still has every map tells a small like maybe a short story Mm -hmm. they just don't tell a a cohesive story if that experience told a cohesive story like would people's opinion be different i don't think so well and i think battlefield offered single player content but it was completely garbage it was like throwaway worthless shit the game starhawk was an instance from my understanding what happened with starhawk was that they originally wanted to develop a multiplayer-only game. Uh, it was a, f- a spiritual successor to a game called Warhawk. Warhawk, yeah. Um, which was a multiplayer-only game that had a very strong you know, long-term community, and they wanted to do that again. I believe the game was going to retail for a lesser price, mm-hmm. and then Sony kind of came in and was like, no, you need a single-player campaign. This needs to be a $60 game. And so they created one, and it wasn't very good. It wasn't what they wanted out of the game, mm-hmm. but that created like a higher bar of entry, mm-hmm. like a higher price point, and the game wasn't able to build that community. And it did for a little while, but then all of a sudden they started adding like microtransactions mm-hmm. and new mechs and stuff and the community just fucking died. Mm-hmm. I think that was should be taken as a learning experience and say, well, if you want to just focus on a multiplayer experience, just focus on a multiplayer experience and make that a good experience. Mm-hmm. Star Wars Battlefront, the, the new Star Wars Battlefront, is very, very polished. The maps are very well designed. There's Now that I've played it extensively, I like every map in that game. Mm-hmm. And I can't say that for another multiplayer game that's ever come out. I right. can't. Right. Like, There's always the map that you fucking hate and you see it in rotation and you you bail Mm -hmm. for some reason they advertised it as having 12 maps the game actually had 13 i don't know where that other map fell off of Mm -hmm. the the radar Mm -hmm. yeah it fell between the cushions they're ready to launch it's like wait i found it like within three weeks of launch star wars battlefront launched two more maps for free which brings up the count to 15 maps when you're when you're talking about a game with maps as expansive as the walker assault Mm -hmm. mode or the supremacy mode map these are gigantic freaking maps and then you, you've got five giant maps and 10 smaller maps uh, you've got 10 multiplayer game modes you've got two or three single player game modes 
you know, you've got playable heroes. You've got a lot of content. I don't even think it's about the amount of content so much as the quality of content. Mm-hmm. And it's very refined content. But I think, personally, I mean, unless there's something incredibly unique or special about the maps, it doesn't really matter where the hell it takes place as long as you're a guy blasting other guys. And Well, I mean, map, map design is something that's very important. Yeah, map design, me. but the actual location of the map, if it's a well-designed map, I mean, it could be in a you know, cargo carrier. It doesn't right. They, they could call it whatever they fucking want yeah. and make the way it looks whatever they fucking want as long as it's designed well. Right. I think what ultimately um, is missing in the content that people are looking for, pod racing, bro. <laughs> I would, I would play it if I know you would. Racing. I know you would. And I mean, to be fair, I have played survival mode in Battlefront, mm-hmm. but I, w- I would play it more if it had pod racing. Mm-hmm. I think there's also just this bizarre comparison overall for every game. You know, I spend $60 and I get Just Cause 3 and it's got 400 kilometer size maps and all this craziness. And then I spend $60 on this other game and it's just got like these 12 maps and, you know, it's still an incredibly highly polished fun game. It's just you're, you're, you're comparing two different things, trying to equate the value that they both give you. You know, I mean, number, number, number. It, it's just, it just comes down to lofty expectations or just not really being sure what your dollar value is worth to you you know i think it's cost me 25 dollars to go see a two-hour movie (laughs) you know and i'm incredibly upfront with my money and willing to pay that to experience that you know if i can get a couple hours out of a game a couple of solid fun hours out of a game is that worth 60 bucks yeah i think sometimes it is you know at the end of the day, you should just watch movies and not play video games. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, so, well, yeah, that, that is also true. You know, I think it'll be interesting going forward to see how people respond to Hitman, which is a single-player experience that's releasing for a full price, but it's promising much, much more content to come out after the initial release. You can spend a smaller amount and just basically test it out and then buy the uh, initial DLC as it comes out, or you can spend the full price 60 get what little content they're giving you out the gate and then with this promise of more content going forward i think it's an interesting model i think it's got merit look games are great shut the fuck up enjoy them have a good night Let's uh, gather around the microphone and let's talk. Open our beers, all right? It's beer opening time. It is. I'll pour some off for you, Mandy. Oh, thank you. Just all over your carpet. What a nice thing to do. (laughs) So thoughtful.